Our reading today is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19 and we'll be reading verses 1 to 18. Reading from the New International Version. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow, I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there while he himself went a day's journey into the desert. He came to a broom tree, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the tree and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he travelled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the, and the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go, and st go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Haziel, king over Aram. Also appoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king over Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of, son of Saphat, from Abel Mehola to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Haziel, and Elisha will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve several thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and all whose mouths have not kissed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Paul. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you all. Keep that Bible reading open. Uh, allow me to pray before we come to this particular passage uh, of the Bible. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this morning again. Thank you for the, the ways in which you call us to serve you, to worship you, and now, Father, to humble ourselves before your word. So help us to um, hear you. Help us to know you and help us to have a heart and the will to follow you 
as our Lord and Savior. So we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it has been a very busy week, and uh, so far has been a busy weekend as well, uh, for reasons that I won't bore you with. Um, I'm tired this morning. Um, daylight saving didn't help either, uh, having lost one another, having to get up early. Um, so um, as I come to preach, uh, you, are, you have a pastor who needs help uh, because uh, he's tired, okay? And I'm sure you guys are tired too, especially with daylight saving. So um, we all need help, and that's what we are going to think about. So um, help, I'm tired. That's, uh, we're continuing our sermon series uh, on help, and today is the last one uh, we are looking at, tiredness. As I mentioned, you might be tired too. So maybe uh, just turn to the person next to you. Just think about this question. What makes you tired easily? What makes you tired easily? Just have a chat. All right. So uh, what are some things that makes you easily tired? Few things? Work. Work. Good. What else? Can't hear if you're saying something. What makes you tired so easily? Boredom. Boredom. Yep. People. Yes, people makes us tired. What else? Children. Children. Yep, coming from a mum. What else? Staying up too late at night. Staying up too late at night, not sleeping enough. Yeah, any, anything else? Any? Monotony. Sorry? Monotony. Monotony. Housework. Housework. Yeah, there are so many things, isn't it? There are so many things that makes us easily tired. Um, here in 1 Kings chapter 19, the reading that we had this morning, uh, we meet a tired prophet. A tired prophet. Um, in, if, you, if you look at verse 5 of chapter 19, you'll see uh, Elijah, he, he ran to the desert and he, he sat under a broom bush or a tree and he prayed to the Lord saying, I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than anybody else. Here is uh, an exhausted, nearly burnt out man crying out, I've had enough. I just can't go anymore. So this morning, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, do two things. One, ask what makes us tired? What are the causes of tiredness? We're going to look at Elijah. Uh, and, and the disclaimer, I don't think this was written to explain about tiredness. This is something else, but we're going to use it to uh, talk about tiredness. Okay? Uh, and the second thing I want to think about is how does God help us how does God help us when we are tired? How did God help Elijah when he was tired? So what made Elijah tired? What are the causes of tiredness? Uh, first, what we see is busyness, isn't it? Busyness. Um, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 1, we are told uh, that Ahab, he goes home and he tells Jezebel, his wife, everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Now, what did Elijah do? What did Elijah do? So to uh, look at what he did, we just need to turn uh, one chapter. Uh, chapter 18 is packed with action, isn't it? Most of you probably know these, these stories, where verses 16 to 40, we have this fascinating kind of comical story where there is a fire contest between 450 prophets of Baal, a pagan god, and Elijah, right? So they're having this fire contest, and Elijah wins the battle. He wins the battle, and, and then he orders the execution of all the prophets of Baal. Then early in chapter 17, verse 1, if you, if you look at it, Elijah had prayed that there wouldn't be any rain in the land uh, for the next few years until he had prayed again. 
Here in chapter 18, after this successful fire contest, uh, verses 42 to 45, Elijah climbs up the top of Mount Carmel, and then he prays seven times for rain. And it rains. It pours down. Then uh, the last verse of chapter, um, or, or the last verse of chapter 18, uh, we see that Elijah had to run faster than the chariot of Ahab to get to the city. He runs. And I assume all of these things didn't happen just in one day. It would have taken at least a few days. Which means, friends, Elijah had a very busy few days. One challenge after another, uh, one success after another, and he would have been exhausted. And no wonder he runs into the desert and says, hey, I've had enough. Now, isn't this one of the common reasons that, that we feel tired? Multiple jobs, one project after another, one deadline after another, one assignment after another. Sometimes we are forced, isn't it, to be busy because we have mortgages to pay, bills to settle. We need to put food on our tables. And we find it hard to say no. And, and on top of all these things, we need to go to the gym. We need to maintain relationships. We need to uh, have our social media presence. We need to get our, our, our hobbies in line. So we juggle, don't we? We just juggle, juggle so many balls up in the air. And we don't want any of these balls to fall. At the end of the day, we are exhausted, tired. We're just ready to throw in the towel, aren't we? And the second cause for tiredness is persistent trials. Persistent trials. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you go back and read these stories from chapter 17 of 1 Kings, Elijah has been running. He's been running, hiding from King Ahab, who's trying to take his life. And by the time we come to chapter 19, uh, Jezebel, uh, Ahab's wife, she's furious because she's just heard that Elijah had killed all the prophets of Baal. So verse 2, she vows to take Elijah's life in return. And after this very successful uh, spiritual high, very successful mission, uh, verse 3, Elijah is on the run again, afraid for his life. He runs and it feels his life is in imminent danger. And it is, it is no surprise, right, that, that, that he feels like, I can't run anymore. I've had enough of running. I have, I'm tired of running from, from one trial after another, one persecution after another. And persistent trials and, and persecutions and, and troubles wears us out, don't they? Ongoing sickness, visits to the doctor, sick family members and never-ending bad news and, and hearing no from job interviews, uh, when, when joy doesn't come in the morning, when we can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, when trials become a normal thing in life, we feel exhausted, don't we? we feel tired, we feel like again, I've had enough of running. Just take my life. Persistent trials. And the third thing that makes us 
exhausted and tired is, is sin in and around us, isn't it? When God, God asks the prophet, what are you doing here, Elijah? In verses 10 and 14, Elijah replies, the Israelites have rejected your covenant. They've torn down your altars and put the prophets to death by with the sword. What he says is, there is sin and wickedness all around me. It is too much. It is, it is overwhelming. It seems there's no fruit in my ministry. There's no fruit in what I'm doing. People haven't changed. They're still stubborn and, and wicked. And there comes a point that you ask, what's the point? What's the point in going on? And if we are honest, friends, we get tired of seeing and hearing bad news every day, don't we? Natural disasters, ongoing war, injustice, human trafficking, drug abuse, corrupt leaders. <clears throat> when we see evil and, and wickedness and, and hopelessness, around us when we see wicked people prosper it is hard to stay energized right and we get tired of fighting for good causes day in and day out trying to see the the good in bad situations we get tired and we seem to swim against the tide and and it is tired to do that add to this our own struggles to get rid of sinful habits and, and addictions that we have, isn't it? We pray, we, we go for counseling, we, we, we access all the support, we try everything in our power, but we can't seem to break free of those chains and, and we are tired of trying to be better. Sin. Wickedness in and around us makes us feel tired. And the fourth reason for tiredness is, is loneliness. Loneliness, isn't it? Elijah felt quite lonely, didn't he? He felt quite lonely. Again, if you look at verse 10 and 14, uh, this is what we hear. Don't we? And the Israelites, they're all gone. They, they're not on my side. All the prophets, they're dead. I don't have anyone who, who I can consult. I'm the only one left. Now, they're trying to kill me as well. He probably didn't have anyone to talk to, anyone to go and worship God with, anyone who understands his struggles, and he, he had to fight all the battles by himself. And you may be feeling the same at home, at work, in your, in your schools, in ministry. No one understands the pressure you have, the, the struggles you go through, the things that you have to deal with. No one understands. You feel everyone is, is kind of against you. Everyone expects you to perform. And sometimes we put pressure on ourselves as well, don't we? Thinking we have to do everything. We have the skills. Nobody else has the, the knowledge that we have. No one else knows what to do. So I might be the savior, the Messiah. And we don't ask help. We act as if everything depends on us. Which leads us to the, the last reason why we get tired. We lose sight of God, don't we? We lose sight of God. Again, have a look at verse 10 and 14. He says, I have been passionate, I've been zealous for the Lord God Almighty. There is a sense that Elijah is saying, I have been doing all these things on my own. I confronted Ahab. I challenged Baal's prophets. 
I built the altar. I prayed for the rain. I had to run for my life. I had to defend myself. And after some time, when you kind of say, I, 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 my, 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 you feel it's all my work, isn't it? It is my time. It is my money. It's my success. It is my skills. And, and we lose sight of God and, and how he's working. We lose sight of God's sovereignty, his, that, that he's in control. We lose sight of God's timing, that everything that we have is, is a gift from God. So, so we work hard. We get busy. And at the end of the day, we get exhausted. We are tired. Just want to just, just, just give up life. Perhaps you can identify with Elijah this morning. Business, trials around you, sin and, and evil around you, loneliness, losing sight of God, and, and all this is causing you to t- be tired. So how does God help a tired prophet? How does God help a tired man or a woman? Now, did you notice the, the first thing that uh, Elijah, when, when, when God, um, when Elijah comes to God and, and says, I'm tired, uh, he doesn't confront Elijah. He doesn't say, hey, stop whinging. Uh, no, the first thing he does is he allows the prophet, this man, to sleep. Isn't he? Verse 5 and again verse 6, he allows Elijah to just lay down and sleep. And sometimes when we are tired, we don't switch off. We just go on and on and on, don't we? And sometimes when we are tired, when we are exhausted, we want to sleep, but, but we can't sleep. Because we want to, we, we kind of toss and turn in our bed, thinking all the things that we've done, thinking all the things we could have done, thinking of all the things that we messed up, and, and we, our minds are still working, busy. Our bodies don't get rest. Now, God, who, who created our bodies, he, he knew that our bodies, our mind, our souls need rest. So what does he do? He even includes rest into our daily, weekly, and yearly patterns, right? Think about it. The sun doesn't shine the whole day. No, there is night where we can sleep. God rested on the seventh day after he had done all the works in six days. So in the Ten Commandments, what does he do? He, he commands and he reserves the seventh day for his people to rest. A day to connect with God. In Leviticus, Leviticus chapter 25, God commands the people to give rest to the land every seven years. He says, well, don't cultivate on the seventh year. Just give the land the rest it needs. So friends, this morning, take rest. Observe the Sabbath. Be intentional about taking a break at least once a week. Plan your holidays. And when you plan your holidays, don't try to cram everything into your your holiday, like every second is covered, doing this and that and seeing this and that. Because the usual thing is, when we come back from a holiday, uh, you, you, you say, like, I need another holiday to recover from holiday, isn't it? Don't do that. And when God gives time to rest, we must learn to switch off. And this is something I find it difficult, and I'm sure you do too. Because the technology that we have today is geared towards keeping us connected, keeping us plugged in, isn't it? How often do you find yourself sitting to read a book 
or, 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 uh, or um, play a board game or eat dinner or, or listen to a sermon without your knowledge or reaching out to your phone or the TV remote. And in no time, you are watching the next TikTok video or your next short video and one after the other because it's enticing and, and, and then you kind of say, oh, the day hasn't even started. I am yawning. I'm tired. We are never unreachable, right? Even at church, while listening to sermons, I see you on your phones. You may be thinking you, you don't see, but I see you. Texting and connecting with people. Give it a rest, friends. Give a rest to your body. Give a rest to your phone. God gives us rest. So we must rest. And the second thing that we notice is God provides our needs, doesn't he? God provides our needs. How often when we are busy and tired and exhausted, we, we neglect food and liquid intake. Sometimes things are so overwhelming, we don't feel like eating. Like last night, we were busy and out running around, and you don't feel like eating. So what does God do to this tired, hungry, thirsty, thirsty prophet? He, he, uh, he gives him something fresh to eat, doesn't he? A freshly baked Bread over coals, a warm piece of bread. I think uh, Kit Kat, uh, they probably took this from the Bible, uh, the inspiration, have a break, have a Kit Kat, because how often when we have a nice meal, we feel good. We feel inspired and we feel fresh. I, um, one of the things that God does to Elijah is he provides this, this meal uh, in an unexpected way, doesn't he? He provides his meal, I'll go back to that, um, while through an angel. He just wakes up and there's an angel with bread and water. I remember during COVID, Fawcett and I, uh, we went around distributing uh, food and doing shopping for people. And a couple of times when we got home, uh, there was a, a freshly baked cake, still warm, outside our door. And we ate it, and it cheered us up. That's what food does, isn't it? And sometimes God does it in the most unexpected way, in the more un most unexpected time may not always be food. It may be a car ride, a, a good customer service, a, a, a compliment, a financial gift that comes unexpectedly, just to cheer us up when we are tired. So expect God to provide your needs when, when you're feeling tired, when you're feeling exhausted, and expect him to do it in unexpected ways. And the third thing that we see is what God does is he, has, he helps the prophet to have an encounter with him. He helps Elijah to see him. After allowing him to rest and, and strengthen for food, with, with food and water, uh, Elijah runs again, isn't it? He runs again for 40 days and 40 nights, and this time he's running to God. Verse 8. Until he reached Mount Horeb, he ran. And Mount Horeb is another word for Mount Sinai or Sinai, where the people of Israel camped at the foothills where God appeared to them and gave the Ten Commandments. And here, it is here at Mount Horeb in verses 9 and 13, God speaks to Elijah. It is here in verses 11 to 13, he gives Elijah this awesome encounter with him. God allows this, this chaotic wind and earthquake and a fire to go before him, but then God speaks to Elijah 
in the quietness. Think the point that God wants to make to Elijah is, Elijah, the life around you is chaotic. It is uncontrollable. It is scary. But I am the one who is in control. I am the one who can quieten the chaos in and around you. I got this. At the, end of verse, uh, at the end of verse 18, God says to, to Elijah, you think you're all alone, Elijah? No, I've got 7,000 other people who hasn't bowed down to Baal or kissed his foot. It's kind of an encouragement to Elijah, isn't it? To, and also a rebuke, encouragement to say, hey, think about it. You're not alone. A rebuke to say, hey, Elijah, you're not in control. You can't, you don't, you won't have control, but I got this. I got this. So friends, it is important that in tired, exhausted seasons that we take time to refocus our eyes on God, that we run to him. Because when we are tired and overwhelmed, we need to remind ourselves who God is, his power, his love, his promises. We need to remind ourselves that God is at work bringing good out of bad seasons. We need to remind ourselves that everything that we have is God's, that he is in control. So what are some things that, that you and I can do to refocus ourselves to God. Get back into a good habit of daily devotions. Get back into a habit of starting and and finishing the day with God, reading and meditating God's word, listening to sermons, hearing testimonies, listening to Christian music, and, and today we have the opportunity to take part in communion to refocus ourselves on Jesus, isn't it? Do anything that helps us to know how big God is and how majestic he is. And the final thing that we see here is God helps Elijah by telling him to empower others to serve. Have a look at verses 15 to 17. He says, all right, go back. Go back the same way you came, Elijah. Now, you're not to go and do the same thing that you used to do. What does he say? He says, you go and you anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Anoint Jehu as king over Israel. And anoint Elisha to be your successor. Now his ministry is changed, isn't it? Go back and delegate stuff. Go back and empower other people. Get other people to serve alongside you because so often, friends, we just feel that we have to do everything. And we feel alone and busy because we have to do everything. And we get exhausted. And so basically God calls us to delegate and empower. Allow others to serve you. Allow others to serve alongside you. Which means we need to shed a bit of pride. We need to learn to let go. And learn learn to allow others to come alongside us. as we remind ourselves over communion. Friends, God rescued us. He redeemed us from slavery to sin so that we can be slaves to righteousness, to do good things that he created us to do. And we can't do or be what God calls us to do or be when we are tired and exhausted. 
So let us take time to rest. Trust in God to provide our needs. And let us cultivate good habits to to refocus our eyes on God. And let us allow others to serve us and serve alongside us. I'm going to give us a moment now, or a couple of moments, just to, to reflect on what you heard this morning. And perhaps you might want to, to pray and ask God for help, because that's the whole reason why we are doing it, isn't it? Help. I am tired. And to reach out to God and ask God, okay, help me to rest. Help me to see you are going to provide my needs. Help me to refocus. Help me to know how I can get others to serve with me and serve me. So let's do that for a couple of minutes, then I'll pray afterwards. Heavenly Father, we admit that so often we get tired, we are exhausted, and sometimes We are exhausted and tired for some of the choices that we've made, some of the lifestyle choices or decisions that we've made. So Father, help us to make wise choices. Help us, Lord, when we are tired and exhausted to find rest in you, to refocus ourselves, and Lord, help us to trust that you will provide our needs Help us, Heavenly Father, to see how we can love and empower others to serve and walk alongside us. And as we do, help us to see you at work shaping and reshaping us into the image and the likeness of your Son, Jesus. We ask this in His name. Amen.